Well, right here I'm actually at the New South Wales Regional Fire Service headquarters. This is basically the engine room for the total bushfire recovery response across all departments here in New South Wales. And there has actually been some worrying developments as the days progress when it does come to these fires. Now, we've actually got around 10 at this watch and act level, and especially around those ski resorts of Threadbow and Perisher that some people might know, there's actually the risk of a mega fire occurring. They're actually only around a couple of hundred metres away. And if that was to join up and get together, it would be very difficult to control moving forward because we are actually having some gale force winds push through New South Wales. Now, it is interesting as well because you did flag on that political response. There are a lot of people talking about the protests that are currently underway in Sydney by those Extinction Rebellion serial agitators. But at the same time, it has to be said that over, say, the past week and a half, the political response has been a lot more robust than it was perhaps at the start of this bushfire season. We've seen the federal government here deploy that extra $2 billion for the National Bushfire Recovery Fund. We've had this state, New South Wales, actually deploy a further $1 billion Australian dollars to support the bushfire recovery process. And we've actually got that new recovery agency that's actually going to get into these communities and actually assist them in any way possible, whether that's a means of getting rid of the animal carcasses, that are the tens of thousands of livestock that they've yet found, that there is expected to be a, a lot more to come, while at the same time rebuilding these small stores and rebuilding these communities because there is also the risk that you have to look at it that this could basically impact these rural communities to an extent where it encourages further centralisation, like some economists are saying, so it could lead to the death of these communities should these bushfires continue because you have to remember the bushfire season here in Australia actually starts in February. So normally the season wouldn't have begun. We're actually seeing these extreme weather conditions and actually worsening this weekend. But the Bureau of Meteorology as well is saying that there's not going to be that much rain to come. So if you take all of this aside and actually put it into context, if you look at the big picture of what's happening so far here in Australia, we've had almost 11 million hectares burned. For those of you in Europe, that's actually the size of Belgium, the Netherlands and Denmark combined. So the devastation has been absolutely extreme. We've had maybe 9 million cattle that are missing or within the fire zone, 9% of the total cattle in Australia within that fire zone, over 10% of the sheep. So farmers are going to be struggling. So there really is this concerted effort right now to just perhaps focus a little bit less on the political side of things, the, the climate change side of things, and just focus on the recovery because there could very well be, as the Prime Minister has signalled, a Royal Commission into all of this. And that's when all of these issues should really be nutted out, Steve. Hi, I'm Giovanna Bersacci and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.